Today on Human Factors Cast, it's our automation mega show. Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Here are your hosts, Nick Rome and Billy Hall. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Mr. Billy Hall. Always joined by Mr. Billy Hall. I love these little moments with each other. Man. Billy, how you doing today? I'm doing great. I love this conversation topic. I think you, you've been like a kid on Christmas over this topic. I, this is awesome. I can barely contain my excitement. <laughs> <laughs> so... What are we talking about today? We're talking about automation, right? Okay, yeah. So we mentioned this on the last podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, automation, we were really alluding to it a lot last time. Right. It was one of those things. It was kind of like a gray line. It kind of kept creeping into our conversation. Right, right, right. Uh, And so uh, this episode, we're actually not reviewing anything. We're we're just going to talk purely about automation because there's so much there. And really, with what we have... For you today, it's really just scratching the surface. Okay. It's not, it's not even going to, like, I can't even go over everything. It would take, like, an entire semester, an entire class. You could have, you could talk about this forever. Right. This is kind of like the 101. This is, yeah. Or, this or, is the, or, or the, even less than the 101, the syllabus that you found on the sidewalk. <laughs> kind of, yeah. No, that's... It's analogous to the syllabus that you found on the sidewalk. You're not even enrolled <laughs> in the class. You just, you just kind of heard about it. Now, was this a big, uh, was this a big thing you wanted to get into when you were actually becoming a human factors practitioner? You know, um, th- I love automation personally. I mean, I've, I've, I'm into the whole home automation thing. Right. I aspire to have a Tesla someday. Um, I am. <laughs> Very much an adopter of automation, uh-huh. and um, I, it's just a, such an important part of our lives that, yes, this is this is something that's very interesting and very near and dear to me. Okay, great. Now, bare, bare bones basic. Let's just get into it. What is automation? Because I thought it was kind of like, uh, I, I, we were talking about it back and forth. I was thinking along the lines, uh, we were talking before our previous episode was, um, oh, man, I'm having a moment. I'm having our a moment. previous episode? Our previous episode. What was it? Oh, my God. We just recorded this. I know. <laughs> come on. Come on. Help me out here. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I'm, wait. I'm going to see how long it takes you. Oh All right. Here we God. go. I didn't even look. Make... Look for last week's show notes. Uh, no, right? They're somewhere around ah! here. Ah! This is killing me, Small. There's your D&D characters. Ah, there it is. Okay, no, 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 I got this, I got this. Alright, let's, let's see, let's see. What did we talk about? Uh, Amazon Echo. And? Okay, that was what we reviewed. Okay, hold on. I can't believe this, it's been such a long week. Oh, so. Don't, why are you doing this to me? I'm just gonna give you a little hint. Okay. It had something to do with computers. Computers, computer, don't all our shows technically have something to do with computers? Technically all our shows do, so that really wasn't a hint. Yeah, that was a terrible hint. You're a monster. (laughs) I am. Okay, come on, help me out. What is it? Okay, okay. What is it? What is it? Uh, Let's play 20 questions, go. Okay, uh... It, we did the Amazon Echo. Yes, correct. Uh, we did... No, hang on. Let me let me say what's unique about the Echo. The Echo was a voice-controlled right. system that we, can ta- that we can talk to. Right. And uh, we were talking about voice-controlled systems. Yes, yes. Uh, we were talking about video prompts, uh, people online, uh, 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 feedback... Oh, uh, God, why? Why is this happening to me right now? I'm, all, I'm so... Just tell me. Computers are social actors. Computers are social actors, yes! Yes! Yes, okay. that's what it was. Okay. All right. So what's the, what is automation, <laughs> and how does all it, of why that. did we keep going back to it with that? <laughs> right. So automation... <laughs> wow. That was, that was such a huge tangent, and this show's already so huge. All right. So... Basically, what automation is yeah. is any sort of system that controls some sort of equipment or program mm-hmm. 
that basically takes the place of or assists a human with a task. Right. Or, or basically an automated task without, with minimal or without human intervention. Now, what, uh, I was looking a little bit at this. Would the clapper be considered home automation? Clap on. Clap off. I know what the clapper is. I'm trying yeah. to think. So what the clapper does, it's still an input. Right. Um, I mean, it's still technically automation to some degree. I don't know. It's interesting because you have to draw the line of what is automation at some point. Uh-huh. Um, but according to this definition, right, is, right. It, is it a control system uh, that allows minimal or reduced human interaction? I would say it maybe. It's, it's like automation for walking over to the switch. Over to the switch or, or to you're still, pull the, or to turn the knob on the lamp, go across the dark room. Right. So, yeah, I mean, you're still, you're still providing an input to get some output, right? The input right. would be the clap or the light switch or the knob, whatever. Mm-hmm. The output would be the light turning on. Mm-hmm. Now, if you look at it just from that input-output standpoint, there is no automation going on there because it doesn't take over any task for you. You are still initiating some task to turn on the light. Yeah, but what if you? What if the light switch is on the other side of the room? Using the clapper cuts down on the ability to have to walk. Here's okay. Le- here's what would be automation. Okay. Say you hook your lights up to a timer. Mm-hmm. And that has effectively replaced you turning on and off the lights. Oh, kind of like during the holidays when I set up the Christmas lights. You got it. Okay. All that, right. That would be considered automation. I I wouldn't consider the clapper automation because it doesn't really take place, take any action for you. Whereas if you had the timer, that actually turns them on and off for you without your input. Uh huh. Okay. I just like the idea of having a clapper. I mean, do they even still sell those? Oh, I'm sure. I imagine so. Okay. So, control systems operate in equipment with minimal or reduced human inter- in, um, intervention, right? Yes. Light switches, on and off switches, things like that. No. No? No. Okay. Like we just talked about. It's anything that takes place of a task. So the the timer would uh-huh. be a piece of automation. Um it would be that yeah, the the actual light switches would not be automation. Okay. So why do we automate things? I mean, ease of life, of course, but like we do this in agriculture, industrial, I mean, things replace people all the time to make things easier on people. Why do we do that? You just said it. Is robots taking our gerbs? They took our jobs. They took our gerbs! So, one of the primary reasons, of course, is to save, you know, the humans from doing all this hard labor. Um, You know, it also, there's there's a ton of benefits to automation, right? So, one, you don't have to pay the person to do it. Mm -hmm. Two, you save energy... Uh, you know, and with automation, oftentimes there's less mistakes that are made because we're human. Mm-hmm. And what do humans do? Make mistakes. All the time. Right. So there's also a sense of consistency in that. Yes. If we automate a, especially, a machine that stitches together pants. Especially for repetitive jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want that thing to be do the same thing every time. Mm-hmm. Humans are really bad at doing that. Right, right, right. Really bad. So why would you not want to automate a system to do that for you? From the perspective of the business owner, that makes a ton of sense, right? Right. I buy one big machine, even though it may cost more than a year's salary of an employee. It might cost more up front, but in the long run, run, I'm saving a bunch of money on that. On materials, because they didn't mess up on it. On energy because you don't have to pay the or sorry on on labor because you don't have to pay the human to do it on energy because I mean you know the machine can probably do it more efficiently than the human could mm-hmm. it just does it really fast and you can get more output for that okay. so yeah basically I mean it's used to eliminate these boring jobs. These dangerous jobs, right? Mm-hmm. Working in a factory is dangerous. Right, right, right. Automating things helps save human lives, right? So that's good, too. And it's also, 
It also is used to replace unfulfilling jobs. Ah, yeah, we've all had those soul-crushing jobs and things like that. Right. So I, I can see where this is coming from. Right. Now, is there some sort of, like, hierarchy or level of automations? Yeah, that's... Yeah, so there's these levels of automation, and these... These, to me, are really cool. So what these are, are um, these are varying degrees uh, by which automation intervenes with a process, right? So, uh -huh. um, or, or it's varying degrees of human input to a system, right? So it's a, it's a range from 1 to 10 where, you know, at the, at the low end of the spectrum, the human basically has all control of the task, and they basically let... Um, you know, they, they, there's no computer or no automation intervention. Okay. So right. kind of like, it's like pressing a license plate. You always see that guy pull a switch, thing comes down, presses the light, license plate this right is, perfectly. This is, this is turning on a light. There is no ah, automation. Okay. There is no automation there. Okay, okay. Right? All the way up to level 10, and this one is kind of scary to me. Um... And you'll you'll see why as soon as I as soon as I read it, the computer does the action if it the computer decides it should be done. The computer tells the human operator only if it the computer decides to let the human know. Nope, you're nope. out. I'm out. You're out. Skynet. <laughs> that's, Skynet. That's incredibly scary to me. Now. I can see how this is idea of working. Now, in the basics idea that I know of science, if, like, for example, the computer decides that the coolant needs to be flushed in, um, I don't know, a reactor of some sorts, right? It would be, it, it, would, it would just know to do it when it decides that it gets to a certain temperature, a certain degree, it would just do it. How about this? There's a fighter jet pilot. Uh-huh. You know I work a lot in the military. There, this Making is an, mechs. This is... Maybe. I cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> there's, okay, so there's a fighter jet pilot, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say this fighter jet pilot mm -hmm. hits something insane, like 8 Gs, and they lose consciousness. Okay, okay. Do you want the, the automated system to go, hey, human, I'm waiting for your input before I start to automate this task of recovering the plane? Mm -hmm. Or do you want it to decide... Oh, the com the human is out. I'm going to level this plane off and make sure this human doesn't die. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a fail-safe type of thing. Kind of. Now, the last part of that. Right, so... The computer tells the human operator only if it decides the operator should be told. Yeah. How does that... Well, that's, that's the scary part, is that the computer itself is deciding whether or not to tell the human <laughs> what it has done. Does it have a moral dilemma? Does it sit on the stoop with its friends with a coffee in its hand saying, I don't know what to do? Are algorithms moral dilemmas? Ooh, we're just making up episodes as we go along. We, we just, are. That's what, that's what you get when you listen to our podcast. We just print ideas. Yeah, uh, and so, so all these levels, they actually play into the way that humans process information, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you mentioned playing a role, right? You mentioned humans processing information, how they do that, and the automation plays a role. What do you mean by plays a role? So, the, the automation can come into any part of the human processing uh, mm -hmm. process i guess um you know there's uh this there was work done by um parasuraman and you know he's he's passed away but you know he'd done a lot of work in automation and he has a cool name he does um but there's there's basically he came up with these four ways basically that automation can come into how humans process information, right? There's, it's broken down by sensory processing, mm -hmm. perception and or working memory, mm -hmm. decision making, mm. and response selection. So in plain English, what that breaks down to is you, the human, are receiving input. You're, you're looking at the world, right? right? 
I see the world, big picture. Right, and there's a difference between sensation and perception, and that's a whole other episode. But, <laughs> printing those ideas. Ah! So, you sense the world, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And once that signal is inside your brain, uh huh, you process that information. Right? Okay, yeah. I see a landscape. I say that the landscape is pretty. That's because it went through my brain and made me think that. You got it. And then once, on top of that, um, you you make a decision. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you make the response. So you see the world. The, you process the world in your brain. You make a decision in your brain. And then you make a response. Uh-huh. Right? So let's say... You get a phone call on your phone. Okay. Uh, okay. Ring, ring, ring. Get ring, ring, ring. You see on the caller ID, uh huh, it's your girlfriend calling you in the middle of the podcast. Uh huh. Then you, in your brain, you process that information. Uh huh. Right? In my brain, I make a decision not to respond to that message, and then my physical response is not picking up the phone. Right. And then later on, it can lead to other responses. Right. Well, I just want to thank Justine right now for providing me with that excellent example in the middle of our podcast. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that. now here's the thing. Automation can come in at any, any part of this process, right? Okay. So, so let's say in that sensory processing, mm-hmm. you can have a task automated for that, right? Okay. Uh, so let's say... You have a display with a ton of information. Mm-hmm. Now, what information is, is relayed to the human? Well, that's all automated based on the situation, right? So let's say, let's say for example, you're driving along in your car, uh-huh. and you're just driving along, and you see the speedometer, and you have a digital display, right? Okay, yeah. Okay. And all of a sudden... Fancy. You see... A, a display pop up that says low fuel. Okay. Right? And it's not just your gas tank. It says you have this many miles to get gas. Uh-huh. Right? So that is automating what information the human sees. Right? Mm-hmm. So the computer's deciding, do I show this? No, we're not low enough on fuel yet. Do I show this? No, we're not low enough on fuel yet. Okay, we're getting pretty low. I'm going to show the human this, this display. Right. I'm going to talk to the human. Right. Human makes up his mind. Right. And and then that, uh, you know, it, there there's these different levels, right? We can go all the way through them. But it, there's a lot of automation involved in decision making as well as response selection, mm-hmm. right? And, and the whole point of this is that you can have varying levels, right? You can have, let's say, for example, I'm going to use that car example again. Mm-hmm. You know, in the sensory processing Stage it uses high automation. It uses a higher level of automation because it's deciding what to show you. Mm-hmm. Now your response, whether or not to go get fuel or not, the car's not going to do that for you. I see. I see. You're you're. It's going to be a low level of automation on that stage. So just like the idea of like uh, my cell phone, my cell phone tells me when my battery's at fifteen percent. Right. I can set it to actually tell me when it's at 30, 50, or 60, or 70%. Right. And it, I can tell it, tell me this when this happens. Yes. It analyzes my battery all the way up until that moment happens. But it doesn't actually change the process when it happens there. Or I can set it to like a night mode, and when it decides what time it is or it's dark enough, it'll auto set my brightness on my phone. Right. So that's a form of automation instead of me physically doing it myself. Yes. You got it. It takes care of it for me. Yeah. I'm learning things here, people. I am learning things. Yay! Yay. Okay. Right. So, do you trust automation? Well, I mean, like, what is that old tech support line? It's like TR-80. It's the idea of, like, there's a trouble between the keyboard and the chair is the problem with the computer. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Like, it's, uh... What is it, like... I want to say it's like TRI-80 or something like that. That might actually just be a U-53R. Yeah, yeah, U-53R. Uh, something along those it's lines. It's a U-53R problem. So I understand that it's us making these problems, but it just seems like sometimes we... It might. Wouldn't it be considered the idea of overcomplicating it? 
I mean like the fuel gauge system. We're adding computer chips, we're adding a computer, we're adding wires, we're adding sensors, we're adding wires to that sensors, nuts, bolts, connectors, on something that we go down the freeway and take a lot of stuff with us and run over things and sadly maybe even hit poor woodland creatures once in a while, stupid skunks. But I mean like, all that sort of stuff happens to our cars and we're adding more to it when we can simplify it and it's just a combustion engine which can break down but that's years and years and years of development right do you drive an automatic yeah i you can't really get a stick anymore do you know what an automatic does yes oh you got me there i it's not like i <laughs> it's not like i wouldn't drive a stick i mean my car has electric seats and things like that that's not by choice that's because once again People want that so much because they think it's easier, but those things are problems. Like right now, my driver's side window is busted. Why? Because I have an automatic window, and the little button switch doesn't work anymore. So I have to pay 70 bucks to get that thing replaced, and if I took it to a mechanic, that's like $300. So automation does come with a pitfall because of the fact that these things break down, right? Yeah, and... It's interesting. So there's a whole field on trust and automation. And uh-huh. like I said earlier, we are just scratching the surface of all this stuff. Right? I mean... <clears throat> I just don't know if I can trust it really, though. So, you know, people can overtrust or undertrust automation. Okay. Um, and, you know, there's a... Uh, for example, I mean, do you trust your phone to root the phone number that you just dialed to the correct number, right? There used to be an operator for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. So, like, on that level, sure. But when... I see your point when it comes to mechanical automation because there are a lot of fail-safes. But that... That's... that's, Sorry, not fail-safes. There's a lot of failure modes. But when you... When you think about all this stuff, I mean, there is... they, They tend to make these things modular so that you can replace a part in the system and not just replace the whole system. Well, it's like this. Like, one time, we had um, a major blackout a few years ago here in California. I don't know if you were here for it. But we had a major blackout for it, right? And the problem was, is that a lot of cell, pro- a lot of cell towers were an issue, okay? A lot of people had cellular problems because there was a power outage, there was a big storm going on, things like that, or when there's a crisis. Back in the day, we used to have landline phones, right? Yes. Problem is, is that if the power went out, landline phones go out, right? But then we made those cordless phones that have a little bit of a battery in it, okay? So there's that, it creates one problem. But now we have cell phones. If my cell phone tower or a couple of them go down for some reason, I'm SOL. I don't have a landline anymore and things like that. We're dismissing older technology for newer technology. And, see, that's the thing. What happens when these things go wrong? Well, in your example, we got complacent with how, you know, our phones worked. Mm -hmm. We got complacent that no matter when we picked these things up, it would always do the automation task that we were expecting it to. Mm -hmm. And so when it misfires, Mm -hmm. we're expecting it to not do that right and then you know it could go the other way too right like let's say let's say for example your phone frequently didn't go off when you press the call button right those cool. those would be like a false alarm right like you initiated it but it didn't go off uh-huh. um, or it gave you a notification but it was it didn't really have whatever the notification was like you got a new facebook message um, from one of our listeners. Oh, wait, we didn't actually get one. We got seven, and it only said one. Okay, yeah, 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 I've seen that happen. Yeah. Like, so, in my, uh, like, where I work, sometimes we have, like, places that are cell phone dead zone for reasons. So, you know, my cell phone won't work in that situation. You know what I mean? Right. So, it's one of those things I'm not used to, and it's kind of annoying when it doesn't happen. Even though I know it's not supposed to, it's still a pain... But, I mean, like, what kind of ways can automation be used in design? Right. So, right now, there's... It's a huge field of how we can, you know, integrate integrate the human into automation processes, right? And there's there's a whole business area 
at at my work that's dedicated to just this oh, problem. We gotta get him in here one of these days. We should. Um, like all of them. <laughs> all the, like 80, 90, 100 of them. The whole, no, we're like 50 employees. <laughs> we gotta get all 10. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you know, in design, uh huh, right, we have to take careful consideration how the human plays a role in the automated system, right? Okay. Are they just providing a trigger? Do they have some sort of decision that they have to make in this system that an automated uh, eh, that an automated process helps them with, right? Now, one example is it can it can be used to take shortcuts for humans mm-hmm. to do things like we said earlier. You know those boring, uh, repetitive, or dangerous or unfulfilling jobs, right? Right. In specific, or specifically, I'm thinking about calculation. Okay. The calculator automates calculating for a human. Right. So, by that logic, it is taking a shortcut of using an abacus, or using your fingers, or using your brain to process multiplication, division, subtraction... Oh, I get it. I mean, like, do you know my phone number? I don't know your phone number. I do know your phone number. Oh, well, my because phone number is, it's like, very easy. Very but easy. in general, though, can you name a lot of the phone numbers you know? Unless someone, you've known them for years and years and years? I mean, I have, like, five phone numbers memorized in my head. How many people are in your contacts, you think? Hundreds. That's the thing. We don't have to memorize phone numbers anymore. Nearly no, we don't. Much. We don't. You know, I mean, when's the last time you saw a payphone? That's a good question. Like, I've seen, I've seen one, but I was in, like, a weird place. You know what was, we don't talk a lot about, like, pop culture on the show. But we should. We should. But I was watching Stranger Things. Have you watched that? You know, I've been meaning to. It's been getting a lot of press. Oh, it's so good. (laughs) <laughs> it's so good. I really got to watch it. Everyone says it's amazing. It is. Like, After the show, I will sit down and watch the first couple of episodes. Of oh, good. good. <laughs> I mean, it like captures the spirit of the 80s perfectly. Okay. Like without pandering to them. Like, it, it does it. It's, it's so good. Well, I mean, like one of the things that I, I talk about with the of that idea is, I mean, and going back to the idea of automation. It's almost getting to the point like the 80s. That's such a foreign idea to us now. No cell phones. No internet. Everything we had to do on our own. If you wanted to research something, go to a library, sit down, yeah. find the books. Hope to God that the books are in the place that are, the library has them. Or wait for weeks for the library to transfer it. Or transfer it. Or, or use those old... I used, because I'm kind of a library nerd. I love library sciences. But, I mean, like, I had used those little data feeds where you slide the different newspaper articles or oh, so college cool. and the little data readers. <laughs> I, I used those things. I haven't actually used oh, them. Oh, they're like. so much fun to look at. I imagine like so. That. Anyway, Stranger Things has that. But they also have a payphone. That's probably the last time I saw a payphone. <laughs> oh, that oh that's what we're going from. Yeah. I was talking about the ideas of before automation. I was still trying to be on topic. Way to go on tangents. No, I'm just kidding. I'm always the one that goes on tangents. It's okay to do tangents on this show. <laughs> I think it so, would, it's what makes us human and so, not automated. <laughs> it's not an automated podcast. <laughs> I fear those days. But, I mean, like, okay, so we were. you're talking about the idea of it's a big field. And when you say field, I'm thinking it's creating a lot of jobs for people, right? Yeah. And and the idea of it is is that it's interesting because we're taking... I mean, like, the quick checkout stand. I've always been a little weirded out by that quick checkout stand, okay? Because we're not necessarily, you know, walking through the door and it's taking the money out and scanning all our items that are in our cart. Right. You still have to scan the items. It's it's, it's on... basically... We're basically doing the cashier's job with a yeah. computer prompt. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Is the cashier's job absolutely necessary? That's the thing. Is, Is it? it? I... I, I mean, like, I and I fear that. I hate using them because I'm like, if we all start using them a lot more often, people are going to be like, I don't need to. Like, I, I, I went into a Fresh and Easy. That That's all they had. Wow. Where did you find a Fresh and Easy? Aren't they all, like, 
Well, it was a while ago. Okay. Okay. Leave me alone. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Their food was was amazing. Did you ever buy their stuff? Great stuff. But, I mean, like, I went in there, and they had, like, two people who would help you through it. Really quick. They're out of business. They're not going to give you free stuff for saying it on the podcast. I can dream. They'll make a comeback. (laughs) I believe it. CompUSA still exists in some form or fashion. I know it. No. And I... Okay. So, anyway... You were saying that... But, I mean, like, I go in there, and they had no cashiers. They right. don't have cashiers there. They have, like, six people who work in this large store, probably 12, stocking the food, and then two guys at the front who, if you have a problem, they they help you with it. Why pay a cashier for something the customers will do themselves? And that's the scary thing. Like, I don't know. You highly educated people, it doesn't matter, because you can help develop and build these things. But yes. blue-collar guys like me... Well, no, here's the thing. So... What it does is it displaces the cashier from a cashier role uh-huh. to a role where they can assist customers. Okay. Right? So it actually just it just moves people around. It doesn't necessarily get rid of jobs in the sense that mm-hmm. you're thinking of. I mean, it can. It can replace a task. But what, it, what it's actually doing is just displacing them. And, and oftentimes, I'm not... It's not a blanket statement. I'm just saying, oftentimes, you know, it'll it'll take that cashier and put them on the floor and say, "Hey, what are you looking for?" Well, that's down here. Let me let, come on. So it makes it more of it's, a concierge type. It's of thing. more of a service instead of a. You so know, you're able to actually offer more of a service for people, but you still don't need as many. It's not that's drawing true. new business to it. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it it really is interesting how automation is taking over a lot of these tasks that you know we used to we used to think were like i said earlier boring dangerous all these things Mm -hmm. and and you know what's really interesting too is that um you know there's varying levels of automation or or not really varying levels we already talked about the levels but this is more like of adaptive uh so like let's say let's say you are in a system right Okay. And you make a choice, and the computer responds to that choice and provides you some sort of automation based off your choice. So, kind of like if I spoke a different language and I called, they always say press two for English, do, press one for English, do for Spanish, so and so and so. Kind of, yeah. So that in that example, you call you call a business, and it says press one for English, uh, para español. Uh, press dos, right? Yeah. I forgot what press is. Oh, man. Uh, don't worry. I, I, couldn't, I never got through Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, so, yeah. I mean, in that case, yeah, the, it's responding to your action, mm-hmm. right? Uh, whereas in one case, it'll present the options in English, and the other, it will present it in Spanish. Um, and, and that's really interesting, too, because it, it tries... Yeah, it tries to sort of, you know, make sure that the operator, when it when it elicits a response from the uh-huh. human, it tries to make sure the operator isn't lost in the system, right? And just as a side note, there's this idea of keeping a human in the loop, right? And what does this mean? So uh, where this is most prevalent is you can see this in, like, automated vehicles, uh, so, like, self-driving cars, right? Imagine you get behind the wheel of a Tesla. Okay. Rolling really in that... I love that Tesla. Rolling in the podcast, though. Uh, yeah, right. Because this is bringing in so much... So much money, you guys. <laughs> Start a podcast and make millions. Um, <laughs> Works so for so many. You're driving behind the wheel of a Tesla. I'm driving behind the wheel of a Tesla. Got you're, it. You're on autopilot. Okay. Cool, cool. Okay. Tesla's driving me. And all of a sudden... The system buzzes and says, says, put your hands on the wheel. Okay, yeah. Okay. But you were reading a book or playing Pokemon Go while you were driving. I shouldn't be doing that. Well, no, you shouldn't be. You can because... Yeah, it's, odd jo- it's automated. Because it's automated. It's doing the job for you of uh-huh. driving. But the idea is that if you were distracted, if you were not paying attention to your to the situation around you something we refer to as situation awareness which is a whole nother show always <laughs> always with these generating show ideas but 
the idea is that you would have no idea what's going on with your surroundings. Is there a reason why, why, what is the reason that the car is asking you to put your hands on the wheel and take control? Like, if you have no idea, it could be really bad news for you. So there's, there's this interesting challenge of keeping humans aware of the system, aware of the automation that's going on, and having them jump in at appropriate times that will, you know, help inform the automated system as to what to do next. So we're kind of like the overlords to the robots. We're the human overlords. Now we are, yes. Yeah! I Instead can't. of robot overlords, we're going to be human <laughs> overlords. The Matrix was wrong, people. The Matrix was wrong. <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny? Uh, um, so you know I'm like a big virtual reality guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a lot of VR stuff. Uh, confession time, I have never seen The Matrix. The movie? The movie. Why? You know, at first it was just like a lack of like actually being... Available, available to watch it, or you know, having ha- having a desire to watch it, really. And then I got into VR, and then everyone, anytime I told somebody that I haven't watched The Matrix, I I would get the same reaction that you just gave me. What really? Like you? I mean, like I'm not one of those guys who are like, you never saw the Goonies? You're a monster. What is wrong with you? You know, I've never been one of those guys because it's like I always believe it's availability. You know what I mean? It has to be. Like, if it's something that's... I'm, I'm surprised when no one says they've ever seen a James Bond movie. Because they're always on cable. Right. But, but then again, people don't watch cable anymore. Oh. But I mean, with this, it's like, that's what I study. Yeah. That's what that's I work with. That's what's weird. And I still haven't seen it. But now, the reason I haven't seen it is because... Spice. No, 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 not spite. <laughs> not spite. No, I, I know the whole plot. Um, yeah. And that's not the reason I don't watch it. The reason I don't watch it is just because of that reaction. Like, I don't want to watch you it. You want because to elicit that response. I do. I do. I, I, I have a friend who's never seen any of the Star Wars. Why? That exact reason. Okay. Just so yep. they can go to... I fell for Just it so right she there can too. go to other nerd people and be like, I've never seen Star Wars. You mean the new ones? You mean Force Awakens? No. None of them. Never want to see them. You know, I knew what you were doing. And I still asked why. I <laughs> fell for it. I just, I fell right into that trap. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. So, all that to say that, you know, automation can kind of inform you. <laughs> wow, we went on a really big tangent there. That was that's, big. That's I mean, okay, that, though. This, this idea of it is, is this, this is such a broad spectrum. And it is really integrated into our lives. Automation seems to be... From everything you've been telling me, the little that I read on Wikipedia when I before we do the show, because I do a little research too, just so I can come up with questions and and you know things like that. Um, I will turn you into a researcher yet. Yeah, um, everything that we do for it, uh, it is really integrated into our lives. Like there was tons of links and articles about how automation has helped agriculture, industry, movie making. Uh, green screen effects, uh, design, freaking writing, colleges, everything, automation. It's everywhere. Yeah, keeping it's, track of people. It's such a seminal part of our lives, and when we don't think about it, you know, it, it fits in seamlessly, right? And it seems to have been in our lives for a long time. I mean, we only look at it now because we're in a, the digital age, but I mean, this stuff has been going on since... The early, like, 18th century when people had those little riggings where you pull one lever and it rigs the whole sail for you. Yeah. You know, things like that. Is a Rube Goldberg machine automation? I'm sorry, I just had my brain leak out a little bit. Is it? I mean, wait. Okay, so... The... It, it is, but it's very bad automation if wait, you think wait, about wait, wait, wait. it. Wait, 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 hang on. So the purpose of a Rube Goldberg machine is, like, literally to move one object into like a perpetual cycle right is that sometimes a... it's also just to do a simple task right like okay it, it's a like balloon. a like a chain reaction okay so i would argue that if it's just like a repeat loop uh-huh right where it doesn't really do anything well that could be considered a task too wow i am really overthinking this sometimes i just think of these insightful questions to ask in the middle of the podcast <laughs> and I end up sounding like an idiot. <laughs> now you're going to be thinking about it a whole drive home. You're going to be like, is... I mean, 
Like, it does do a thing that you could normally do. It just right. does it in a really stupidly elaborate way. What do you guys think? Comment on our SoundCloud or Facebook or Twitter. Is a Rube Goldberg machine... Automation. Get yeah. back to us. I, I mean, want to... Uh, I'm going to be thinking about that now. I feel smarter just thinking about thinking God, about it. I am so glad that wasn't this week's question. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have been prepared. <laughs> I love Wait, this week's question. Wait, it's not this week's question. No, it's not. Okay, no, good. it's not. Okay. That, would be, that would be awesome, but just to stump you like that. But still. Now, we've talked about a lot of the things and how automation is intricate in our lives pretty much now. Yeah. But applications of automation. Right. So I think we already touched on to a lot of them, right? Right. But, I mean, there there are these things like um, Tesla self-driving cars, uh, like Google's car. But it doesn't. it's not just limited to that. You know, there's, there's other vehicles. Um, I think Mercedes is coming out with a... Or maybe it's Volkswagen. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. They're coming out with a self-driving car bus so public transportation will be automated wow um like we don't have to unionize machines you know what i mean we don't i mean like the only it's only a matter of time before we automate the process of making automation machines to the point that we can have those people anybody who's not as educated in automation work the machines to make automate does that make sense it's kind of like falling in on itself but i mean like but what if you make machines to work on the machines Automated machines to fix automated machines. You know, I'm having like flashbacks of that Wally movie now. That's kind of frightening. Have you seen that? <laughs> I have. Yeah, you know what Every, I'm saying here. Everyone's really tubby. Yeah, we're really <laughs> tubby. So I mean, it goes with it. We're halfway there. <laughs> we're men of the future, right? That's right, ladies. Of men the of the future. future. Um, but I mean, like one of the things that I came up with while we were actually even talking about it while we're filming. One of the things of automation I didn't even think about was, we mentioned it earlier, one of the earliest forms of automation I think I remember that's gone now is phone booths. It replaced the idea of being able to actually have to either physically go to someone's house or go home because you got uh, needed to call somebody. I guess if you break apart automation into its simplest form, which is replacing a task, although... A phone booth isn't a control system. I mean, it is, but it's not... It's, it's got buttons, dials, and... Yeah, but it's not a control system for the walking. Or transportation. Is this kind of like the clapper situation, though? So, what a phone booth would do is automate... Oh, automate physically going someplace to somebody's house, or having to go back home, like if you forgot eggs. Okay, I see what you're saying. All right. I don't know. That's would, a good question. It's it's almost a philosophical question, right? I mean, well, that's what the things I'm coming up with. I mean, we've done a lot of automation. Like, what's the earliest thing, uh, um, invention of automation you can think of? Well, there's... Um, so, I, I know the term automation was really big when Ford first came about, and they came up with these assembly lines. Assembly right? lines, yeah. Um, and that's, that's really when the term kind of started getting steam. But... <laughs> ha ha. Um... But I, I'm I'm positive that automation has been around before that. I mean, I, I don't know. I I couldn't answer that question on the fly. I'd have to research it a little bit. Well, I mean, like, that's the thing. There's a lot of forms of automation. Like, I was looking at... I'm going to look it up right now. I'm on my phone. I'm a terrible person. But, uh... You're looking at your phone while we're on the podcast? I know. Did you know Wikipedia has a wiki? A wiki for... That's so meta. Yeah, right? Automation wiki. Look, it's the first thing on my Google search because I've gone to it so many times. That's automation. Yeah. Because it knows what you want to put in. It does because this is a cool thing that I like. That's a shortcut for... I'm getting excited about this automation stuff. Automation is so cool. I'm a little bit still freaked out about it all, but it's still really cool. Like You know know what would be really cool mm -hmm. is if we automated, um, like, everything and... We just sort of, you know, made these robots who took over everything and ruled us. What? Are you or have you ever been a replicant? I can neither confirm nor deny that. You're a monster. 
Oh. I mean, like... What okay. do you find it? <laughs> so... Uh, What's there's the earliest, guy... earliest okay. automation? According to Wikipedia, the earliest right. feedback control mechanism was used to tent the sails of windmills. Ah! It was patented by Edmund Lee in 1745. I'm sure it had to have been around before then, because they had pulleys and levers way before then. Well, I mean, I that's mean, like the first... Is that the first patented one? The earliest feedback control mechanism. Okay. Which would have been the earliest form of automation, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the idea. Because, I mean, it it, 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 it tents the sails. It does the job that a human should be able to do, but one person can do it while it automates putting the, the canvas over the si- things for windmills. Well, if Wikipedia says it's true, it must be true. Obviously. Obviously. It must be. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. I mean, like, that's one of those things. It's 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 one of those things. Like, it's been a part of our life. It's kind of, humans use tools. It's kind of the reason why we're on the top of the food chain. We're not the biggest. We're not the strongest. We're not the scariest or the best hunters. But we develop things that make up for those lacks. Oh, I'm so glad you didn't say we're the smartest. Oh, no, we're not even that. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't say that. Because I would have had to make a huge counterpoint on that. But anyway. What would have been the counterpoint? Do I really need to go into this? Like, why aren't we the, I mean, the smartest? I don't know. Why not? Maybe the more, most resourceful, but I don't. You think an ant's smarter than me? I'm smarter than an ant. I'll mess an ant up. So... Oh, man, here's a whole nother topic. But, <laughs> no. Smartness and intelligence, all that stuff boils down to different factors. And it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with uh, what we're talking about here. So, for example, like a, uh, a person who is musically inclined uh, is not necessary, But, like... Or think about savants. Right? Okay. Someone who's very skilled in in something. Right. right? It could be it could be music. It could be um, doing mathematical calculations. But they may be, for all intents and purposes, um, inept when it comes to social. Right. 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 Or, right, right. or something like that. We all know people like that. There's different levels of intelligence, and there's different factors that play into it. Anyway, my point here is that. Animals have a different intelligence. Like you, for example, wouldn't know how to follow the snail trail or the ant trail that leads you back to the queen. You wouldn't know what the queen wants unless, I mean, you studied this stuff. I get what you're saying. So, so we are not necessarily the most the, the smartest, but we are, we might be the most resourceful. I will okay. say that. I will say. All that. right, I'll, I'll I'll digress to that one. Anyway. But, what were, what uh, were we talking about? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, we were talking about, I mean, this is a lot of stuff. Applications <laughs> yeah. of automation. And we were talking about the earlier forms of it. You know? Oh, right, right, right. Okay. I mean, like, I was talking Bring about the idea back. that we we replace certain things to make up for things that we lack. Like right. Like the animal it's be- kingdom. It's becoming a big part of our life. Right. right. I mean, you, you, know what's, you know what's interesting to me um, is this bot movement. So... Like, a lot of our social interactions are now becoming automated. So, like, you can order a pizza with a chat bot. Oh, yeah. I've seen Facebook. that. I don't want to do it just because I don't want to be that guy. It, like, seems like sometimes automations, I just don't want to do it because I don't want to be that guy. You know, I really want to try it. I just want to be like, hi, Domino's, how are you? And see if they, like, respond back. <laughs> I spent... I spent... Not a whole lot of time, but a, a couple hours on, like, these chatbot sites just to see, like, it's all algorithms. Just to feel human contact? It's <laughs> automated human contact. No. <laughs> I mean, it's all, it's all weird because it's, like, it's all algorithms driving what their response is. And sometimes their responses are just so human-seeming that it's... It's kind of creepy. We need to have a whole other chat on robots. Okay, yeah, you know, I tell you right now, like, the worst ones is, I mean, especially since I try to run a lot of the social media for this podcast, right? Right. Uh, Sometimes it's like, people will hit me up, and I'll be like, yeah, da-da-da-da-da, oh, yeah, you like the show. They were like, yeah, and then all of a sudden they'll be like, if you want to see my pics, go to this website. 
I'm like, ah, oh, you got me. You got me. I thought you were a real person. Wait, so you went to the website and tried to get these pics? No. <laughs> yeah. That's that's when they would have got you. No. They got you. No, they got me because I thought I was talking to a human being. Or that old uh, adage everyone always has where they're talking to a person, right? And they're just reading through a script and they're like, man, I hate machines. And the person's like, do you think I'm a machine? People do that. It's scary. It's creepy because we can't, it's, the lines are starting to get blurred. Wow. Anyway, that's, that's a lot of automation to take in. I'm glad we had a supersized episode for it. I mean, um, I think we, we we could even do probably another one, like recant or oh, get someone on. Oh, oh yeah. If for, you guys are interested, sure. let us know. Let us know. But this next part of the show, this is where we take the questions from you guys, our listeners. Billy, what is our question today? I like our question today because it's it's a it's a meaty one. It's it from is. Clint. He re, uh, he writes. What hey Clint guys, say? since you're talking about automation this episode, or well, he said next episode because it was a while back. But, He's responding to our last episode. Uh-huh. Uh huh. How do you guys feel about the euphoria world where people only have to work because they want to? As more jobs go away, more money is provided to people to do with as they please. Now, the first part of this I was weirded out by. What do you mean more money is provided to us? Oh, wait, hang on. The first part of this is hey, guys, since you are talking about automation next episode. You were weirded out by that? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right? So, no. Yeah, I, I didn't quite understand the more money is provided to people to do with as they please. What I kind of understood it as was, you know, it's kind of like a free society. We just we just kind of have our way with whatever we want. Um, and automation kind of takes care of the rest of the chores for us, right? So we are basically a species that i mean we're still policed by robia ro- by robots obviously obviously our uh, robot overlords but i mean us humans we're free to do whatever we want right uh. so it's a euphoria world so there's no there's no terror there's no it's it's perfect okay okay right right or that's utopia i mean it's still euphoria it's the idea that it, there's not a lot of strife Right, right. I mean... There's not a lot of want or need for things. You go get food because you can. A robot does everything from killing the cow to cooking the meat to putting it in a hamburger and serving it to you. Yeah, but who's And delivering it to your house. So, I mean, like, let's say, for example, in the perfect world, in our lifetime, let's say, the whole world becomes automated. Okay. Everything... uh, The whole world's automated. Yes. All right? I, I can go down and get my bean and cheese burrito just how I like it. You wouldn't have to go down there. They would bring it to your house. Okay, let's say I have to do that, right? Okay. You, you talk with a chatbot. They... Chatbot sends it. Yeah. How am I making money? I'm still paying for services, like my cell phone bill, my housing bill. I still have to pay somebody something, don't I? I mean, like... Maybe, I... unless this is a euphoria world where that doesn't exist. Everyone just gets what they want. See, I think this is the part I'm missing. In my head, like, I don't understand the idea of free. And I know that's probably very (laughs) jaded and cynical of me, but I don't understand that idea because I see it as kind of a scary thing where the idea of it is people, um, so many jobs are replaced by people that we have to figure out a way to take care of them, and then there's less and less jobs for the average person. Like, you're more educated than me in a job. I couldn't do your job. You went to school for a long time to do your job. On the other side of that, maybe you couldn't do my job. But a lot more people can be trained on the job to do my job. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's get back to Clint's question here, though. Because he's saying, in a perfect world, where everybody gets what they want, uh-huh. right? You know, it, within reason. Uh-huh. Okay, no one has to work unless they want to. That's that's the question he's getting at. So if you want to work, that's fine. Everything else is a, he, how. He's just, that's the thing. I, how don't do I, ask how. He's asking what would if happen. If we all had unicorns, would I fly on a unicorn? I think a lot more people would make podcasts. Look, that's the look. thing. This question really got me. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if it's just like a short circuit in the brain or what. Okay. So look, here's here's the thing. Are you ready for the thing? Uh, uh-huh. Okay. So you kind of hit it with the podcast thing. Uh-huh. This is my thought. My thought is that 
humans, because everything else is automated, mm -hmm. we would become consumers of entertainment. Right. That would become our medium. So, I mean, and you can see it now. Everyone's making a YouTube channel. Everyone's making a podcast. Yeah, we are. Because we consume at an alarming rate. People will sit and watch Twitch for hours of people playing video games. Mm -hmm. People will watch other people eating. Yeah, and that's weird. Call it entertainment. No, no offense to any of you people who watch other people. No, eat. no, it's just I, different it's, it's things a thing. to different people. It's a th so. I I think mm -hmm. that if this euphoria world existed, right, where people only had to work because they wanted to, they would basically create art. Right, or it's, they would work on themselves, or they would work on themselves. But I think I think the trade would then become art. I think you trade one piece of art for another. Everything else is taken care of for you by automation. Automation can never replace the beauty that is human art. I get what you're saying. It's kind of like that old Star Trek adage where uh, 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 Data tries to paint a painting or write a poem. You know, it's the idea that a machine has trouble doing these sort of things. You know yes. what I mean? Although, machines have gotten increasingly better at writing short stories, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm afraid of this. <laughs> I mean, like, the idea of the creativity is you're talking about a world where we focus more on the idea of self-improvement and self-creativity. You're talking about Star Trek. I'm talking about this euphoria world that Clint brought up to us. Right. It's like a Star Trek type of thing, though, is what Star I'm saying. Tre Star Trek is not a euphoria world by any means. What? People don't have money. They don't have crime. Everything is automated for them. They can travel wherever they want to go. They can get on a ship and go to a different planet. It's all free. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, well, it's all I, free. I never watched Star Trek. Oh, okay. I'm talking about human race, too. There's I, other people that have it. But Star Trek is a whole other thing. I, I'm a Star Wars guy. We know this. Why do you have to make those distinctions? I feel attacked I'm not, right now. I'm no, not, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not saying that Star Wars is any yeah, you better are. than yeah, Star yeah, Trek. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah, yeah. Different, different things for different people, right? Right, exactly. Like it, it depends. Star Wars, Star Trek, people watching Twitch to watch people eat food. Exactly. 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 So, I mean, like, we would have... I mean, like, if I had no... If I lived in this Euphoria world, I'd be able to go, and I'd be able to travel the United States, because trains are automated, everyone's connected. You can do it. I could go and explore stuff. I could do... That would be awesome, because I would just... The only boss and the only obligations I have are to myself. Yes. That would be awesome. That's what I don't think. understand that's a possibility. I don't I don't think it's a possibility. I think this is a hypothetical question that gets at automation. Yeah, that's true. At its fundamental level. Like if everything was automated, how would we as humans handle that? But that's kind of how we're going. I mean garage door openers, cell phones. There's always gonna be something Little Roombas. For you. There's always going to be something for humans to do. That's that's what I believe. I don't think we can ever fully automate everything. There's always going to be a market for people like me. Oh, you monster. You're going to be our overlord, aren't you? They're, you're going to no. become a cyborg? And no. you're going to become an overlord? No, but like, look, look. Let's break it down, though. <laughs> There's always going to be this human element of how humans integrate with this automation. All right. There's got to be someone to look into that and say, oh, look, they're going to have a hard time when this automated system does this. Until we get to the singularity. So there's going to be people who will take my job, uh -huh. and then there's going to be people who create art. Okay. And that's, that's going to be the dichotomy. And there's going to be scientists who... I, I can't ever see... There's going to be because, okay. astronauts, scientists, probably... I don't know. We could automate firefighters, which is scary. We could. Look, here's Probably the thing. Probably not cops and judges and lawyers. I, I think that's going to be automated. I cops? To I totally think RoboCop and... <laughs> RoboCop like, wasn't well, totally I mean, automated. I, I totally think that there will be criminal justice systems that are automated in the future because of all the social commentary... Oh, that's uh, true. Right that's now. True. Right now, especially. Yeah, you got me there. Dang it. That's a scary thought, though. I mean, like... I'm terrified of a euphoria world. Look, here... Okay, 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 hang on. I'm going to pose a question to you. What if there was no longer a jury of your peers? 
but instead a computer algorithm that sorts through all of the evidence for and against you and decides based on a probability how guilty you are. No. Nope. No, you're out? I'm out. Because it's a jury of my peers. It's not the idea of whether or not I did it. It's the whether or not of reasonable <laughs> doubt. And I know that sounds horrible to say. Right, but... But that's the but truth. The algorithm could take into account reasonable doubt. No, I don't... I don't want to leave my decision up to something that doesn't have a sense of compassion. Mind you, a, I... A sense of compassion can be programmed in. No. It's, it's a okay. parameter. It's a parameter in an algorithm. At this point, we're talking about, like... AI, like human sentient, uh, sentient, not sentient creature, sentient robots, right? Yes, we'll save that for the robots episode. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so that you know. What, what about I, you? What do you want? Would you want to live in this euphoria world? No, it uh, would be boring because I'd always get what I'd want, and I would never have to work for it. Why would? It, but you would. You think? What if? Okay, we have to take in consideration of something here. If you and I currently lived in that world, I think we would either find a little bit of oogie. If we were born into that world. If like, we were born into it, it would be it'd be fine. Yeah? I mean, like, you think there would be a little bit of backlash. There's always a little bit of backlash of people who are like, no, low-tech rules, no cell phones, eat granola. <laughs> granola is great. They're not going to send you anything for saying that on the show. Nature box. It's for everybody. And they love podcasts. Well, Nature Box. Come on. All right. All right. I'm, I'm calling it. That's all right, it. All right. All right. That's all right, it for today. Right, bye, That's bye, it bye, for today. Bye, bye. All right. If you guys want to be featured on our show, we're all over social media. Go ahead and comment on our SoundCloud, Facebook, or Twitter. Mm-hmm. Or you can send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com with all of your questions. Be sure to like and follow us on all the social media, too. We're always trying to keep in touch with interesting topics that you want us to talk about on the show. Articles or anything. Anything. I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on LinkedIn.com slash Nick Rome. Billy Hall, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at ComStarClaret. Thanks again for listening us to us here on Human Factors Cast. Until next time, it's a pain. It's a pain.